How's it going everybody? Welcome or welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to defeat Ekthir or Ekthir, I don't know how to say his name, but the first boss in Valheim and this is going to be a part of the bosses series for my channel. Let's get into it. Alright, so first off, there's going to be two options here. Option one is going to be to do it solo, which is how I'm going to be doing it. And option two is going to be to do it with friends. And I'm going to leave video chapters in the description for where those guides start off. Really though, I would recommend watching the first four steps of doing it solo because those are going to be my personal recommendations to ensure that you get a good start to kill Ethier. Really the only step that you need to do is you just need to get a bow. I would highly recommend you don't need to do it, but you need to get a deer trophy. That's the only step from doing it solo that you need to do. If you're going to do it with friends, you will still need a deer trophy. And just to clarify, this video is not going to be for speedrunners or people that are trying to defeat Ekthir by cheesing and or cheating it and getting it done early in the game and doing it easily. This is going to be a traditional, legit way to defeat Ekthir, and my personal opinion, it's the best way to defeat him. Alright, so before we get into option one, step one, I just want to let you know that I do have a beginner's guide on starting Valheim and in my personal opinion the best way to get started and that guide will walk you through it's a little long but it will walk you through literally everything on becoming a beginner expert an expert beginner in Valheim anyways and it will definitely prepare you for fighting Ekthir and I'm pretty much going to cover the entire video very 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 briskly and briefly in this video just because it's such a long video I'm just going to tell you the basic things that you need to have crafted and what will help you defeat Ekthir, but that video will walk you through literally everything. Okay, so starting off with option one, step one, we are going to want to just get started in the game, grab some materials, craft some basic equipment, get some experience, roam around a little bit and explore, build a little small hut house or whatever you want to do, and just kind of just kind of play the game. That is step one, super easy and simple. And like I've said before, I do have a complete beginner's Valheim guide that will kind of walk through all of that. Step two is going to be to craft a shit ton, like a literal shit ton of flint and or fire arrows, preferably flint arrows. They do a little bit more damage. Uh, trust me, you'll definitely want them, especially since you're going to be doing this solo. So we've got flint arrows and fire arrows, 100, 100 of each here for myself. Step three is going to be to level up a little bit. Like I said a little earlier, hopefully you did that by exploring and just kind of playing the game, enjoying yourself and, uh, you know, just living the life of a Viking. Again, I did clarify that this is not going to be a guide for speedrunners. So if you want to get this boss fight done quick, simple, easy, maybe even you want to cheese it a little bit, go ahead and just find another video because this is not the one. Step four, I'm gonna request you to craft some specific items. And those specific items are gonna be the uh, leather helmet here, the leather tunic, the leather pants, the deer hide cape, and like I said just a minute ago, fire arrows, flint head arrows, you're gonna want the crude bow, and you know, maybe you'll want the flint ax. You're probably not gonna use it unless you really wanna melee him, but I wouldn't suggest that. Some other things you're going to want is going to be mushrooms, cooked meat, and cooked necktail, or grilled necktail. And one last thing you will most certainly need is a deer trophy, because this is used to summon Ekthir at his pedestal. So you'll want to make sure that you just kill a shit ton of deer until they drop a deer trophy here. Now I'm going to help you out a little bit, and I'm going to give you the recipe that you will need to craft all of this equipment. What you're going to need, obviously you're going to need a workbench, and you'll want... To craft 100 flint arrows, you're only going to want 40 wood, 10 flint, and 10 feathers. So if you don't have that, I would suggest going and collecting that and crafting those flint arrows. To craft the crude bow, you're just going to need 10 wood and 8 leather scraps. That one's pretty simple. And to craft the full leather armor or the full set of leather armor, you're going to want 22 deer hide and 5 bone fragments. Now, before you craft the crude bow, if you want to kill deer before you craft the crude bow, you can use a knife, the flint knife right here. You can use the flint knife to sneak up on deer and hit them from behind. It's a one hit kill with the flint knife. 
and that will uh, that will let you get deer hide and maybe even a deer trophy before you get the bow. But the bow is the easiest way to kill deer. All right, so moving on to the fifth final and longest step is going to be to completely obliterate, murder, and destroy Ekthir. And the way that we're going to do that is first off we need to locate his pedestal or his summoning pedestal, whatever you want to call it. You're going to bring your deer trophies over there and to find this summoning stone or pedestal we're going to go back to the sacrificial stones and we're going to activate the veg visir or ve veg i don't know how to say the word but it's like a little stone with like weird red markings on it we're going to go back to the sacrificial stones and activate that veg visir and that will reveal the location of where ekthir's summoning stone is on the map all right as you can see this is what the summoning location will look like and this rune stone reads, hunt his kin. All right. So we're going to talk to Hugin. He says, calling forth the beast, you have found the summoning place of one of the forsaken. Make the correct offering at their altar and they will come. Be wary though, the forsaken are not easy prey. So craft a wicked weapon, don your finest armor, and eat a hearty meal before engaging them in combat. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We've already done 90% of that. We're just going to go ahead and eat some food here. All right, once we're healed up in full-on stamina, we're going to go ahead and summon this Ekthir Forsaken boss, whatever the fuck you want to call him. Just as a side note, you might want to eat this while you're on your way to summoning Ekthir, so that, you know, you don't waste any, any time just sitting here doing nothing like my dumbass. All righty, once you're fully healed, you can go ahead and drop the mystical altar uh drop the offering on the mystical altar here and we're gonna okay well i did not know that you needed two deer trophies i totally just thought it was one a few moments later all right so once you've collected your two deer trophies and you're nice and healed up unlike me because i'm a dumbass and had to go grab a second one you will make your offering to the mystical altar You'll remove your two deer trophies. You'll kill the, wi the wild frightened boar that's pissing you off. And you're gonna try and fight him without dying. You're gonna wanna make sure that you don't get hit by his fucking lightning. And basically, after completing the first four steps that I explained earlier, the easiest way to fight him is gonna be to just kinda kite him like this. Run away like a scaredy cat. Try and kill this fucking boar because he's pissing me off. Run around objects, do whatever you gotta do to get away from him. And if he looks like he's going to do his AOE attack, which stands for Area of Effect, you're definitely going to want to run away. When you get the chance to shoot him, take it. Thankfully, we have this leather armor. It helps us not take as much damage from his lightning strike. That's his AOE attack right there. It's pretty big, and it does damage to basically everything. So you're definitely going to want to run away from that. Make sure you don't hit his antlers either, because uh, you don't do any damage when you hit his antlers. So that's pretty important as well. Pretty simple tactics, kiting, you know, don't get hit by lightning like that. Make sure you avoid that. This is really honestly the easiest, well, really the second easiest way to kill him, in my opinion. You can cheese it if you want, but I don't really count that. Uh, the, the second, or excuse me, the best way is to honestly really do it with friends. Or if you want to cheese it, just get a really high level friend to basically just come kill him for you. But as you can see, I've already leveled up my bow skill twice while I was here. And that's my Google Home going off, so please just ignore that. So basically what I was saying earlier, just ensuring that you level up that bow skill really well is going to help you a lot here. Um, and as you can see, it's not really viable to, you know, do a melee combat strategy here. It's pretty simple, pretty easy first boss. You know, I always like to take my time when I play video games, do the side quests, explore what I can, level up a lot. And, you know, that kind of makes the rest of the game fairly easy. But once you've killed him, you're going to want to go ahead and pick up everything he drops, which is going to be hard antlers and his trophy. Talk to Hugin. He says, Congra oh my god, congratulations, warrior. Return to the sacrificial stones with your forsaken trophy and offer it as a sacrifice to make the gods smile upon you. And that is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and return home. Also, just a side note, having that rested benefit in the top right will definitely help you out as well. And you can see I only used 23 air, or excuse me, 24 arrows. Um, but, you know, if you're not that good with the bow, 100 arrows is definitely something you're going to want to have. And uh, along with if your uh, bow skill is not that high. 
if you want to fight him melee style, I would recommend looking up a YouTube video for it or just go ahead and go at it. If you take these uh, first four steps that I recommended before, you should be pretty set to melee him to death if that's really what you want to do because you can see I'm, I've got plenty of health left here. So we're not going home. We're going to the sacrificial stones and we're going to place our offering on the stone. So once you've come to the sacrificial stones, you're going to just go ahead and attach the item. And you'll see it reads, your ability to run and jump is improved. Jump stamina usage is minus 60% and run stamina usage is minus 60% as well. Now that is only when you activate the power. You can activate the power from the stone. And once you've activated the power, it will be ready to use. And once it's ready to use, you go ahead and just push F. You summon the power like a true Viking. And now you can see I don't run or jump I don't run any faster or jump any higher, but what I do is I consume 60% less stamina from doing so. So you can run much further and jump much longer, or more often, I suppose. So that is the first option. And the second option is to go ahead and just summon some Viking allies and bring them with you to help fight Ekthir, and that will make it much, much easier. Again, you know, following the same steps, one through four, it's going to be really helpful making sure that you and all your friends are prepared. You've got food, you've got crude bows, you know, whatever, whatever you need. If you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. But I would not suggest trying to just go ham on Ekthir unless you've got like four or five buddies or excuse me, four or five total people helping you fight him. Because, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. If you go there in freaking rags, you're probably going to become a tombstone pretty quickly. So I would not suggest that. Really, when you fight Ekthir with your buddies it's the exact same concept you're just going to want to kite him whether you're using a bow or a flint axe whatever you may have just make sure you're kiting him stay out of the area of effect you know any attack really that he does i believe his deer antler attack where he sweeps you up with uh his his antlers or he just swipes at you with his antlers is definitely his strongest attack can do the most damage uh, as you can see earlier when i was fighting him it did like 651 damage to a rock or some outrageous number like that which is pretty fucking insane and really again it's just the same concept you just have friends with you and again once he's dead you know same process just bring his trophy to the sacrificial stone here hang it up by uh, activating the hook and you get the same power you get his uh his ethere power the forsaken power uh you activate it at the stone um and then once it's basically you equip it at the stone when you activate it and then you can push f to use it and it's minus 60% usage of stamina when you're running or jumping. And that uh, lasts for five minutes. You can see it in the top right corner. I've only got two and a half left. Once we've hung our delightful Forsaken Boss God Trophy, whatever the hell, we are 100% ready to move onward to craft the pickaxe or whatever the hell it's called with his hard deer antlers that we just collected and we're ready to move on to dominate the rest of our Valheim world and get ready to fight the next boss, create things like brass equipment, you know, smelter, whatever the hell this shit is called, I don't remember, but we're ready to go craft it and kick some ass. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace.